have, some have not, most have not. So you, you all, are you all familiar with cryptobiotic soil crust? Just black bumpy stuff all over the ground. Yeah. I'll point some out to you on the van riding to mineral if you're in my van. All right? Um, that is a living soil. It's just black bumpy stuff all over the ground. Have you guys hiked in arches since you've been here? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So have you guys seen those little signs on the trailheads yeah. with the little bumps going, with the boot getting ready to squash them? So you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so please stay on existing trails. Don't make any new trails. Don't make any new campsites. That's exactly why we gave you the high water campsite list. So you can uh, reuse those campsites that have already been impacted. All right. Uh, regarding campfires, you do have briquettes. Do you guys need, you guys want two fire pans? Your fire pan's literally a metal oil change pan about 16 inches diameter. Do you need more than one of those if you're cooking for 18 people on briquettes? John, John. Yeah. Um, Are we cooking on briquettes? Anything on briquettes? Not that I know of, I don't think so. It's mainly just like mountain house type stuff. So water for jet boils. So then do you need your charcoal? Like, we'll just take one, I guess. Okay, is it just one fire pan? Sounds yeah. good. Uh, um, so uh, right now we're under a fire ban. We have not seen rain here in a long time. Uh, and so with that in mind, what that means for you is no fires, no open flame. If you guys need, if you guys want to do s'mores out there, if you want to do whatever, cook on briquettes, that's fine. Uh, but make sure you use your char your um, your briquettes, please. Briquettes are okay. Uh, open fires of open flame are not. If your stove should fail and you have to boil water uh, using campfires, that's why we send you with a fire pan. You are required to carry one anyway, even if even if, even though you can't really use it, uh, except for briquettes. So with that in mind, uh, any firewood you collect in that event should be driftwood. Don't chop down any trees. Don't break down any branches, please. In the morning after you've had your fire, whether it's charcoal or otherwise, there's going to be half-burned sticks and coals on top of your fire pan and powdery ash in the bottom. The half-burned sticks and coals go in a bag, after they're cold that is, carry them to your next campsite and reburn them so that everything goes down to powdery ash. The, pow the ash in the bottom of your fire, can, fire pan, aka the stuff that will sink, can go in the river. Um, don't just chuck it in the river right off the, right off the beach from your sandbar there. Uh, Wait out in the river, get it in that fast-moving current that's headed downstream. Um, that way the current will disperse those ashes downstream. Uh, if you throw it in the, in the river right beside the, the sandbar, uh, what will happen is as the river continues to go down, um, the people that come after you get to enjoy a nice ashy beach. No fun. All right. Um, let's talk about the one thing we all have in common. That's poop. Your pee. <laughs> Your pee should go in the river, unlike other parts of the world where they tell you to go uh, 100 feet from the water source for low-impact camping school, like... Beaumont, for example, where I worked. Um, here we want you to pee in the pool. It warms up the river, gives you a little bit more water to float in. <laughs> <laughs> the solution to pollution is dilution, as they say. Hi, I'm with you. <laughs> so please pee in the pool. <laughs> all right. In all seriousness, if you go, in all seriousness, if you go 100 feet from the water source, they can tell you to go, uh, like, like they tell you to do at Philmont, for example. What'll happen is, um, we don't have enough rain to break down that stuff. Um, your pee will get all over the ground. It'll make this nice green stinky bacteria that lasts for decades. Yuck. And then your, 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 your campsite will smell like urine for a long time to come. So please just pee in the pool. All right. Now, regarding your feces is what this box is for. And we saw how full of crap you guys were right away. So we need two of these. All right. Need four. Before you take the lid off of this, before you take the lid off of this, go ahead and pull this tab as a pressure release valve. Or some people call it a fart valve. <laughs> but the last thing you want to do is take the lid off a pressurized box of poop. Oh, boy. Oh. As, my, as my boss says, it could reach escape velocity. All right. This black O-ring seals the stuff you put in there in there. So you don't want to get this all sandy and dirty. So set him over here, business side up. This is your seat. This goes on there, right? Just like so. The box can't bear your weight. Feel free to have a seat and enjoy yourself. Things that go in your box. Feces and good old-fashioned household toilet paper. Things that don't go in there. Everything else, rock sticks, beer cans, your SPL's underwear, your advisor's hat. All of those things don't go in there. Definitely not my hat. It's funny. <laughs> Make no mistake, it's funny to put his pinkish, purplish, mauvish hat in there. Um, palm trees. But Palm trees. But, but yeah, but let's not do that. And the reason why is um, all those other items clog the pump in the bottom of our septic tank. Um, other things of, of particular concern. Latex gloves and wet wipes, baby wipes. Septic system safe wipes, biodegradable wipes, all those things clog the pump in the bottom of our septic tank. Doesn't matter what it says on the side of your wet wipes packaging. Biodegradable, made out of hemp seed and, you know, elf farts and fairy wings. It doesn't matter. They are lying to you. 
<laughs> After the nuclear apocalypse, the only thing left will be cockroaches and wet wipes. Twinkies and... And Twinkies, maybe. And Keith Richards, maybe. And yeah, yeah, and Keith Richards, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's nice, I like that. So, uh, please, please, with all those other items, I use wet wipes in the backcountry for personal hygiene as well. Great idea, all right? Uh, but take those items, put them in a Ziploc bag, carry them out with your personal trash. Those clog the pump in the bottom of our septic tank. You're looking at the guy that's going to be doing the unclogging. It is an awful mess. So please, please do me personally a favor. All right? Um, other things for you. If you get to the end of your trip and you realize, oh, man, I was so dehydrated yesterday. I got up in the middle of the night and filled our toilet with wet wipes. It's okay. Confess your, confess your sins. Just let us know. I'd much rather fish those wet wipes out of a big box above ground than a huge box of feces buried in the earth. Uh, so please, please, just let us know. It's not a big deal. Once you're done, go into the restroom. Oh, and by the way, notice when I when I mentioned things that go in there, I didn't mention pee. If you guys want to pee in there, that's fine, but there's 18 of you. If you fill it up with urine um, on day two, you've got a very messy problem on your hands. And that's what to do with your solid waste for the rest of your trip. Um, so my recommendation is pee in the river first, then come over and sit down, go in the box. You can try it the other way if you want. I'm not that coordinated. <laughs> uh, you guys do what you want. Um, but go ahead and take the seat off once you're done. Put the lid right back on like so. If you're breaking it down for travel, inspect the O-ring here. Make sure there's no sand on there. If there is, take a square of your toilet paper. Take a victory lap around your O-ring. Success. <laughs> Throw it out the box. And put that right in there like so. If you're breaking down your toilet for travel, go ahead and flip this, these little square washers over like so. Snug, snug down opposite corners at the same time. And what you're going to get with that uh, is an even seal with your O-ring. If your lid's cattywampus, you could end up with some messy bilge water in your canoe. Uh, uh, no fun. Not nice <laughs> wants to carry it out. All right. <laughs> so there's that. That's all snugged up and ready to go. Now, toilet seat. They don't make these anymore. They're irreplaceable. We love them. We want them back. They double nicely for group picture frames as well. All right. Uh, if you want to take pictures of each other, of each other wearing your toilet seat, that's fine. Do what you want to um, but they don't make these anymore, so we really do want them back. So we give you a sleeping bag and a life jacket for your toilet seat. That's what this is. Drop this guy right in here. That'll make him nice and cozy. Um, and the foam in the bottom of your toilet is his life jacket. If you, you should drop this overboard to a float, you can hopefully retrieve it. That way, you're not paying for hundred dollars worth of toilet seat that you can't even use, right? Other things for you um, that I forgot to mention as well. Sorry about that. I'm sleepy this morning. Um, if you leave this sitting in the sun for the next guy, that's fine. If you don't like the guy in line after you, that's fine. I'm 98% sure Johnny Cash was singing about a Texas Riverways toilet seat when he wrote the song Ring of Fire. It's 105. It's 105. Put that in the shade for the next guy, whether you like him or not. I promise you, applying a second degree burn salve to someone's <laughs> bottom is not going to be fun. Uh, it, it'll, it'll be less fun than the joke will be funny. Extreme uh, ghost. Uh, so, once you're done, put this guy in a sleeping bag, like I said, and snug that up, and that's ready to go. Last but not least, uh, what's your name? Carver. Carver. How much do you think this whole show is worth? In dollars, that is. Worth? Um, uh, empty, that is. How much do you think this is worth empty? <laughs> <laughs> Probably more than I would like to spend on something I will not use. Uh, well, I hope you'll use it. Well, after this. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's a clever answer. This whole show is worth about 500 bucks, and that's empty, like I said. Once you filled it, it's priceless. <laughs> so fill it up, make us proud out there. In all seriousness, the idea of carrying a box of your PCs with you on a river trip or any other wilderness trip is absurd. I wouldn't argue that. I don't think the head, the head river ranger at Canyonlands National Park would argue that either. However, um, if you consider the fact that literally thousands of people flow through the river corridor every year, we transport about 3,000 people just Texas Riverways. All right? That's an awful lot of poops out there. All the campsites, everybody was out there digging cat holes. All the campsites would smell like a big outhouse. It's everybody's national park, yours and mine. Use your toilet system, please. The reason why these are required is because um, there used to be big commercial river trips that would go out there and they would all just tell people to dig cat holes. Well, very quickly, uh, they realized that all the campsites smelled like outhouses. So it's awful. Please use your toilet system. It's not only a request, it is absolutely a uh, national park regulation. Uh, if you've never used a river toilet before, it's kind of fun. It's way easier than digging a hole, I have to say. Um, so anyway, enough about that. I won't harp on you on that. 